Hi, my name is John McCormack from Sensi Lab, and I'll be presenting on behalf of my co-authors our paper, No Longer Trending on ArtStation, Prompt Analysis of Generative AI Art. So the motivation for doing this work was the rapid uptake of emerging AI technologies, specifically text-to-image systems, which take a simple prompt and turn them into an image. In just the space of a few short years, we've seen the quality and capability of these systems gain an incredible amount of traction. In 2019, generative adversarial networks were the state of the art, but they were quite crude and only able to generate poor quality images and required significant amounts of training data specific to the kind of image that you wanted to create. In the space of just a few short years, diffusion models have rapidly overtaken GANs and become the de facto model for AI image and now even video generation. They've overtaken all other models and are now easily accessible, even being embedded in commercial tools such as Adobe Photoshop. They're high quality in the sense that just by typing a simple text prompt, you can get an image that rivals the quality of a professional photographer or illustrator. But this rapid uptake has meant that there's been no time for ethical considerations and going from a research tool to something that is immediately accessible to almost anyone on the internet has been undertaken at a very rapid rate. So one recent estimate put the total number of AI images created to date as exceeding 15 billion images. And this is more images than were created by photographers in the first 150 years of photography, which is quite astounding. The problems with these systems, however, are well known, particularly in terms of bias or reinforcing stereotypes. So for example, this study by Rest of World in 2023 typed in uh, fairly generic prompts like a house in Nigeria or a house in America repeatedly to compare the kinds of imagery that was created by Midjourney, one of the most popular text to image systems. And you can see that the house in Nigeria is often shown dilapidated or falling apart whereas the house in America is shown in pristine condition, a, a multi-storey house uh, in a beautiful setting. Similarly, typing a street in New Delhi shows um, a street with a bonfire burning in the middle with rubbish strewn everywhere. Um, and an Indian person consistently gives an elderly man in a, in a white beard with a turban. So the purpose of our paper was to look at how people are using these text to image systems, these prompt based systems. And in order to do that, we drew upon three different data sets. The first data set was called Diffusion DB and consists of 14 million, 14 million images and 1.8 million unique prompts. And this was gathered in a, a four week period in August, 2022. The second data set was a mid journey 2023 data set with approximately 250,000 prompts and associated images scraped in June, 2022. And the third data set was one that we created with about 2.48 million prompts and associated images that we collected over a period in October and November, 2023. To scrape these data sets, we went on publicly available Discord channels, which is where software like Midjourney operates. So users of the system can type in their prompt and this is visible publicly, as is the images created by the Midjourney bot. So uh, between the 25th of October and the 9th of November, 2023, we extracted about 2.84 million raw records and ended up with just under, uh, sorry, just over 900,000 uh, prompts from 34,000 users. And our data set is publicly available at the URL shown in the slide. So just to compare the difference in the data sets, which were collected uh, over different periods in 2022 and 2023, I think one of the most interesting things that we found was that the user base, particularly for mid journey had increased significantly. So over similar periods from 2022 with only 1,600 users, mid journey uh, in our sample period, had 34,000 users, which is a 20 fold increase over 2022. The other thing that the basic analysis of these different data sets shows is that the size of prompts is getting smaller and the number of prompts that a user types is on average getting smaller too. One of the first things we did 
was to look at the languages that people were using as they write the prompts. And unsurprisingly, prompts are overwhelmingly written in English, with over 99% in all of the data sets of prompts being written in English. One thing we do observe, however, is the rise of other languages, even though they are very tiny by comparison. So, for example, French increased from 0.027% of the total prompts in the Diffusion DB dataset to being 0.38% of prompts in 2023. So, our analysis of the prompts required decomposing the full text prompt into what we call specifiers, which is akin to the standard process of tokenization. So in this example here, we have an image and the prompt that was used to create it. Uh, and this was done on mid-journey. Two Korean girl, 85 millimeter, F1.8, beautiful woman, photography, forward shot in the style of Renhang, and with some um, information to the generator to specify things like the aspect ratio and the style. So what we do is take these raw prompts and break them into what we call specifiers, which are largely comma-separated uh, tokens. So uh, breaking this prompt up in, in the example, we get two Korean girl as an individual specifier. We have special uh, tokenizers that recognize camera settings like the 85mm and f1.8, as these tend to be used very often in prompting to replicate specific camera features. Beautiful woman, photography, uh, we do a little bit of basic spelling correction because it's quite amazing how uh, poorly people spell, and particularly when it comes to people's names, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So you can see here all of the different specifiers that were extracted from this prompt. We have specific um, recognition of uh, specifiers that Create, relate to style and the style of a particular person. So we use the Spacey NLP library to recognize the names of people and mark them as being a person's name when we do the analysis of the prompts. So one of the first things we did was look at the most frequent specifiers and I guess unsurprisingly these largely relate to the surface aesthetics of the imagery that people are trying to make. So one thing that you do notice in the early data sets, for example, the 2022 Diffusion DB data set uses the terms like art station, sharp focus, and trending on art station as some of the top used specifiers. And by the time we get to 2023, we see more generic specifiers being used like white background, cinematic, photorealistic, um, black and white, or hyperrealistic. And I think this reflects a general change in the quality of these systems and that they don't need such specific terms as they did even just a, in, in the space of 12 to 18 months of development. So this uh, compilation of images shows trending on art station specifier, so prompts that used that specifier as part of their prompting from the Diffusion DB 2022 data set. And you can see that there's quite a variety of imagery, and even the style of image varies somewhat. If we fast forward to 2023 and choose white background, so prompts that used white background, you can see that the image quality has increased significantly and that pretty much all of these images have a white background. We did a stylistic analysis on each of the data sets and looked at what the most popular styles were. And this table shows the results for each of the three data sets. It really looks like the Diffusion DB data set was dominated by people looking at anime, fantasy, and game art. And by 2023, the diversity and also the number of users is much greater. So we're seeing more generic stylistic uh, prompting, such as anime, watercolor, comic book, and vector art, and so on. Although there still is a lot of emphasis on things like anime, and reference to specific studios like Pixar, for example, which seem to be consistently referred to over a number of years. So this image shows uh, images from the Diffusion DB 2022 data set in the style of Pixar. And you can see that some of them look kind of Pixar-ish, I guess, but there's a huge amount of variety and it's not obvious what all of them have in relation to Pixar. Whereas again, by 2023, pretty much all of these images look in the style of Pixar. So the 
Use of these prompts is not only continuing, but the quality of and accuracy of the images in reference to the style appears to be getting a lot better. So some general findings from our basic analysis of these three data sets were firstly that there's been a big increase in the number of users. And I guess this is not really a surprise because the technology has become uh, both very accessible and very popular, even in the short space of the 12 to 18 months that our data sets span. Specific prompt memes to coax visual quality were required in 2022, which is you know, why the term trending on ArtStation appears so prominently. Uh, this is largely because it was in uh, a help sheet that uh, Stable Diffusion provided in order to get uh, the prompt to coax the best visual image quality from its initial version in 2022. And this has become far less important now as the visual quality of almost any, any image that you can create with these systems is um, quite significant. We also see the dominance of fantasy, game, and anime illustration as the most popular styles, particularly from the Diffusion DB data set. But by 2023, I think we're seeing more diverse set of users and more casual users who just type a few prompts and they're shorter and to the point. So this example on the right just shows a uh, warm family, white background. And that was the only, uh, that was the full prompt. So no uh, complex visual aesthetics or anything like that. And you get a high quality image out of it. I mentioned earlier about the use of artist names in reference to style. So this was another thing that we analyzed in all three data sets. And this table shows the frequency and names of the most popular artists in the Diffusion DB data set from 2022. As you can see, uh, it's dominated by men and by fantasy and illustration artists or concept artists. Um, and this is reasonably repeated across the three data sets. Here are word clouds showing the names that uh, appear most commonly. And you can check the paper for more details about that. Our general findings on artist names were that prompts regularly specify artist names, particularly in reference to a style. The top 10 is dominated by Western male illustrators, about 90% uh, from the data sets that we analyzed. And many or most are fantasy game or concept commercial art illustrators. Although we did start to see a more diverse range of artists coming in in 2023, probably due to the increase in users and also the capabilities of the system in replicating particular styles. So again, an example that's very popular in 2023 was Wes Anderson's style after the filmmaker. And there's an example on the right. So this use of artist names has led to a whole series of both legal and ethical challenges around the use of particular artists' work in training data. So uh, Lewis Van Baal, who is the top three artists in the Diffusion DB data set, uh, commented that uh, Stability AI has a music generator that only uses royalty-free music in their data set, and then asked why is the work of visual artists being treated differently? And there's some interesting potential answers to this question, which are largely to do with royalties and copyright in the music industry working differently than they do in illustration, for example. In music, there's a lot more legal and structural frameworks around copyright of music, which is more difficult for visual artists to um, access the same uh, kinds of tools. And this led in 2020, uh, three to a protest, uh, sorry, in 2022, to a mass protest on ArtStation because so many artists' work who posted their work on ArtStation were getting copies of their work made using AI. Another aspect that we analysed was the topics that people are putting in their prompts. So we've seen a lot of reference so far to artist names, to stylistic uh, references like Pixar, for example. But what are the topics that people are actually um, specifying in their prompts? So the way that we did this topic analysis was to take the prompts from the Midjourney 2023 data set and uh, perform tokenization, converting them to a database of specifiers, and then selecting those specifiers that had at least 100 uses. And this reduced the entire database down to 1,700 different specifiers. 
We then used MPNet to create vector embeddings, and MPNet is um, a program that converts specifiers into vector embeddings, producing a 768 dimension vector that we then put into a vector database. This um, high um, dimensional vector was then reduced using a UMAP algorithm to five dimensions, and then run through a clustering algorithm called HDB scan to create a series of 40 clusters that became the topics, um, the highest level topics um, in our analysis. We then took these uh, five dimensional vectors and reduced them down to two dimensions so that we could plot them on a 2D map and then manually annotated the top level labels um, to produce a final interactive visualization. Here's the visualization, a still image is shown from it. It's actually interactive. You can go to the URL shown on the slide to view it interactively. And you can see that the top level is dominated by stylistic references to things like aesthetic style, fantasy style, artistic style, vector line drawing, cinematic quality. There's clusterings of groups around photographic style, the level of detail, lens effects, lighting conditions, um, aesthetic color, mood, realism, perspective, and so on. And I'd encourage everyone to um, have a play with this interactive visualization because it really gives you a sense of uh, the major topics that people were using throughout all of the prompts that we analyzed. So our general findings were really that there were five main topics that people would fairly consistently specify in a large number of prompts. And these relate to resolution, generally making the resolution high, the level of realism, the mood, the level of detail, and the specific lighting conditions. And about 30% of all prompts used one of these topics. There's a large reference to photorealism, so people using photography themes, photographic themes are common, such as camera and lens information, shutter speed and aperture, so on, in combination with words like photorealism. There were also a lot of references to generic style, particularly to things like vector art and line drawing to get generic styles not specific to a particular artist. And one of the other things that we found that was quite curious was that because the data collection period was around October, November, that a lot of people were uh, using Christmas in their prompt, presumably to do things like Christmas images for Christmas cards or something like that. And also that making images for coloring books was very popular. So on the left, you can see a sample image where someone has specified the, um, uh, the style of a coloring book here for coloring in. Okay, so the next step that we did was to analyze the images themselves. Uh, so, so far, we've only been talking about the text prompts. We haven't actually looked at what the images created were all about. So prompts show the author's intention. That's the way that someone writing a prompt shows what they intend to get the system to generate as an image. However, they don't evaluate the prompt alone. They evaluate it in terms of the quality of the image that it produces. So this evaluation is done visually. So in theory, a person prompting a system judges the success of that prompt on how well it turns the prompt into an image not on the aesthetic or other factors of the prompt itself. The prompt is simply a means to a visual end. So with that in mind, we decided to actually analyze the images themselves um, in relation to the prompts. And the way we did that was again to take the Midjourney 2023 data set. And if you're familiar with Midjourney, you'll know that when you type a prompt in, the system gives you four variations of the same prompt shown in lower resolution. And then you can choose, if you want to, to upscale a particular image or even collection of images. And generally, you'll only perform this upscaling if the image is interesting to you. So if it's, you know, to some extent being successful in terms of a prompt. So what we did was take only the upscale requests in the mid-journey data set and run them through a state-of-the-art blip captioning model. Now this model basically takes images and tries to caption them, much in the way that a human would describe the image. So um, basically just describing things like what's in the image, the aesthetics, and so on. So we ended up with about half a million images, and we ran them all through the captioning model to generate 500,000 captions, which we then ran through a topic analysis, somewhat similar to the way we did the topic analysis with the prompts. 
So here's an example, and it shows you the difference between a user prompt and an AI generated description of the image. So on the left, you can see the prompt that the user typed. Imagine a dreamlike scene where reality blurs and the boundary between woman and peacock dissolve. Sketch a woman's body full of delicate vulnerability, her features soft and poetic, and so on. I won't read the whole thing, but you get the idea that there's a lot going on in this, this prompt that this person has, has typed in. And you can see the image that it generates. But when we run this through the captioning system, it simply says, well, this is a painting of a woman with peacock feathers on her head, which is probably how most people would describe it if they were just shown the image without um, knowing the prompt that had created it. So when we did this, we ended up with a number of topics um, of the images that people were creating on the Midjourney system. And these are dominated by pictures of women. So uh, the word woman or the topic of woman appeared in 22.26% of images. Man was only 16%. And you can see here that there's a lot of reference to things like um, anime, the appearance of women. Next down is room interiors. Uh, Christmas, again, was very popular because of that time of year. References to men largely involve men fighting. And then uh, below that is flora and nature, and birds in particular being the eighth most popular topic. So one thing that we didn't um, discuss in the paper that we did do following up from the time that we wrote it was to look at individual user workflows, to look at how, over time, individual users are using these systems. Now, the users are anonymized, but they're um, characterized by a, a number that references the same user using the system. So we're able to uh, basically collect all the images that a particular user generates over a session and looked at the images that were upscaled. So here's one example where the user is consistently trying to get or remove the clothes of a woman um, uh, with uh, snakes in her hair. And the prompts that this person is using are pretty much the same over the entire prompting session. The person is just typing in more or less the same prompt again and again and again. Here's a kind of a time lapse, I guess, of a person uh, trying to evolve a, a, a hand holding an eyeball and showing how it went from realistic images to graphic novels and then kind of back to more realistic images. On the left is the uh, prompts and the images that were created. On the right is the images that that user chose to upscale. This sequence is a little more um, concerning. It's a user trying to basically get a, a picture of a model with less and less clothes by saying things like the clothes are undersized, it's very hot, um, it's sweaty, and so on. And you can see the progression um, that goes on in this sequence of images that this particular user is trying to generate. So just to conclude, um, I guess there was a lot that we found by analyzing these prompts. And um, before discussing some of the findings, I should perhaps offer a caveat that with you know estimates of 15 billion uh, images being created, even though we looked at millions of prompts and analyzed millions of prompts, it's only a tiny percent of the prompts that people have used. And it's only the ones that are public av publicly available. Midjourney is now the only system that uses Discord and uh, has publicly available prompts. All of the other systems like DALI2, Stable Diffusion, uh, people can either download the software themselves or the prompting isn't made public. So we just don't know really at a global level uh, how people are using these systems. So despite the claims of liberating art for everyone, which was pretty much what Stable Diffusion and Midjourney claimed uh, when they first came on the scene, most people are not making capital A art with diffusion models, uh, at least from the results that we analyzed. Prompting focuses largely on surface aesthetics and visual appearances. And this is often done at the expense of other elements that would be important traditionally in artistic image making, such as narrative, diversity, and originality. Prompting simply reinforces stylistic norms and aesthetic sameness. And after looking at thousands and thousands of these images, you start to recognize a kind of aesthetic sameness, even though the diversity of images that people create is obviously quite high. And rather concerningly, a large majority of images generated are of young and stereotypically beautiful women. 
Other findings that we found were that users often repeat the same prompt many times, suggesting that much of the creativity in the system comes from the system itself, um, and that ultimately comes from the training data, rather than any specific art or knack in the prompting. So in some of the examples I showed in, in previous slides, if you look at the prompts themselves, they were hardly changing at all, um, changing by maybe one word after using them maybe 15 or 20 times. So this does suggest that people are just basically rolling the dice with the prompt and waiting till they get something that they find is interesting. The other thing that was interesting was that many prompts are over-specifying the scene. They provide way more information than is actually used by the system. And this is often redundant and ignored by the system. The majority of uses seem, uses seem to be recreational rather than artistic. So people making Christmas cards, uh, trying to create images for coloring books, um, suggesting that maybe so far a large amount of prompt based images are just clip art. They're being used for casual image creation. They're not being used as a serious artistic medium by the majority of people. There is some evidence, however, that people use these systems in roles that would have traditionally been done by professional illustrators, particularly in the use of commercial art. And of course, these days, the quality and capability of the system is still increasing. As this sample image that we drew from our data set shows, the prompt was simply realistic body art for Day of the Dead. And to think of uh, having to do this for real to get a model and a photographer and the lighting set up and everything would take quite a lot of time and it would require quite a lot of skill to do. And that's what these uh, text image systems are now disrupting, I guess. Although there's still a long way to go, this is the only image in my entire presentation that I generated myself and all of the images were generated using these text image systems. I asked for a Pandora's box that had been opened with the word diffusion models written on it and uh, this one was done with, with DALI 2. So you can see it's still got quite a way to go in terms of actually being able to give you what you want. So thank you for um, listening to the presentation. Um, please go to our website and download the paper if you'd like more information. Thanks.